All right, you guys, one of the most interesting parts uh, in this course, basically, I'm on the XAUUSD gold weekly chart. And as per as per my macro perspective, I actually said that this could most likely be an A wave within the grand super cycle. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to show you what happened in March 2008 within this flag formation for the fourth wave so this would have been the, free, the third wave so what we what we actually see here is a complex uh, complex formation within this within this fourth wave um, and then of course right after that as you can see a few months later in the year uh, within 2008 then basically they um, they started buying gold traders started market participants started buying gold uh, within the um, bullish most powerful fifth wave yeah and then right after that we we basically topped right here in 2011 September yeah so this would be our top for the grand super cycle a now the way this panned out after that we contracted in a very complex uh, complex structure yeah so how I am labeling uh, this chart right here on the weekly uh, basis on the weekly chart I'm, uh, I'm actually inclining towards a possible uh, bullish outcome before the next uh, possible fall. So the wave count is, is basically done like this. After, after basically the top of the grand super cycle A, I am marking this as a cycle A black and then as a running contracting triangle in this cycle wave B. Okay, so basically what I have here is an A then a B breaching this this low and possibly confirming this triangle yeah so in other words an A B C D E running contracting triangle in um, primary waves A B C D E for cycle wave B and right after that of course the fall has started one two three four five and how I'm labeling this is as an ending diagonal within this cycle black C for the primary waves one two three four five red so we have one two a b c three four a b c or yeah for this uh, fifth wave thus completing the c wave on a cycle degree and also completing super cycle a purple yeah now right after that of course let's say for instance in 2015 2015 um, december we started we started going up and I do have uh, I was actually you know monitoring uh, gold uh, back then with a uh, noticing this bullish divergence therefore I started posting this for people closest to me and then of course uh, we had uh, you know happened to my analysis happened to work nicely so we had this nice rise in this so back then I actually say I, I was actually you know uh, saying that this we could have this and then we we go directly yeah for this for this possible b however of course you need to adapt as an eliotician so right after the um, you know the presidency presidency of uh, trump we had this right so it kept on going down so i'm gonna i'm gonna basically explain to you guys we're gonna take it we're gonna take it basically step by step here within this complex structure now as you as you notice of course we have we have a um, we have a rise here and then we have a free in this in this fall now this could this could be you know this wave count let's say for instance this entire piece right here has multiple ways of being labeled so it can either be labeled as an a and then a b c d e which is basically the main count that i've chosen for now because it's i mean many uh, many possibilities for structure do lead uh, towards a possible one more bullish outcome regardless of how it unfolds some of the structures do um, you know do do give that opportunity you know, possibility now let's say for instance if we were to count this in a different way now in an ending diagonal you can all, you can only have a c way so that's for sure okay now if this would have been let's say for instance a w yeah and this entire piece would be the x yeah we would have 
an A, B, and then a C. So as you can see, it's it didn't uh, it didn't pan out that way. Now, for, for for instance, if you would have if we were to have A, B, C, D, E, yeah, in this uh, in this formation as a triangle, uh, for this to be an X, then of course the outcome would be would be for this uh, for, for this C to actually start and basically you know breach this low. Uh, retest it. However, by the way things look, I'm not really sure of that. Plus that I don't really like uh, this triangle. I mean this in, this entire uh, this entire wave. I mean this entire formation only correcting 38.2% of this entire drop. So it's not it's not really um, you know that doesn't really have the right the right look. So how I decided to label this? Uh, I mean within a triangle uh, scenario I decided to label it as A and then the triangle being in the B wave yeah so it had A B C D E if this this um, this scenario were to be correct regardless of what the structure is um, this of, of course this uh, this upper trend line this contracting trend line needs to be watched yeah because this is basically when it will uh, you know XAU USD will have a giveaway let's say so should it should it rise and then form let's say a flag a flag right here a flag formation this could possibly be a confirmation for a uh, let's say a buy uh, opportunity however yeah if it doesn't and we actually I mean I actually I can spot a proper bearish divergence right here then of course the next stop would be this lower trend line and this is exactly when we're when I'm going to see if we're gonna have some sort of flag formation right here consolidation because this this trend line comes way I mean from way behind you can see how powerful this is yeah so even if it drops down there well basically I'm, I'm, I'm gonna see basically what uh, what the reaction is so there are two key levels uh, which will definitely determine the structure so it will take just a bit of time until I will be convinced you know uh, exactly what the outcome would be however the, by the way I'm um, analyzing the structures um, would be honest with you there are more possibilities for a bullish outcome in my personal view and this is of course my personal view so this is not out of the question however yeah now if we were to go here, as I said, I'm going to be closely watching this uh, um, this this lower line right here, yeah. Because if we do have a breach, then this low could be confirmed. That's at least this low, yeah. So we will actually see. However, I'm going to I'm going to point you out towards a few things. So anyhow, let's let's basically zoom into this piece so we can. Um, so, so we can actually analyze it properly. I have a different wave count, a different way on the daily chart to within, I mean, for which this, this structure can be uh, can be labeled differently. Um, however, as for let's say, for instance, should it should this be the correct um, structure? Yeah, because as I said, there is no clear way or no guarantee that a structure is going to unfold 100% like that. No, you basically, as a as an as an analyst, aliatician, etc., you need to be flexible and you need to understand patterns. Yeah. So as I said, uh, Elliott wave is a form of pattern recognition. So what what we actually do, what you will actually do is basically to determine the highest probability for a pattern to unfold um, in in a specific way so let's face it, let's let's see basically what you do is you exclude options once they are invalidated yeah so so far this scenario with an a b c is not invalidated yeah it would be invalidated if we have a drop here of course so the wave count should be reviewed and in that case even though I don't I don't really agree with only 38.2 percent I would most definitely in a B wave um, agree with a 50 percent or even 61.8 so we will see but anyway let's see as a as a Fibonacci projection from A towards the lowest point in this in this triangle I would actually pay attention to 
um, should we go there of course 1450 or even 1650 however there is um, you know that this chart and the price action needs to prove itself in in, uh, in my uh, in my eyes yeah so we do have a rise right here i'm gonna go i'm gonna go on it shortly and basically explain to you what i'm uh, what i'm seeing but let's go to the daily chart right now and see uh, see basically what uh, yeah i'm gonna walk you through um of course within this i mean let's say for instance in 2015 when i've noticed the uh, possible bullish uh, divergence and a very possible um, bullish outcome yeah as i said i made i even made some videos i even you know posted some uh, some analysis and there we go we actually started uh, going on in an uptrend yeah so as you see as you can actually see i've marked this primary green b in an expanded uh, flat and then one more squeeze and ending diagonal for this primary c thus we have an abc and once it started going down i mean of course i i actually said i mean not really not really here but somewhere along here i actually said okay we have a complex structure in in gold so therefore i decided to label it as a w and the x uh, and the x wave basically this uh, pink uh, pink x right here is also formed out of complex structure so we have an a basically intermediate a and then intermediate b in a uh, running triangle and then the last leg c and there we go of course we started we started going up after that in a free we're causing a uh, false breakout within this primary uh, X yeah and during uh, during the presidency of mr. Trump then of course uh, you know gold uh, started going down and dollar dollar index started going up yeah so that's basically the last leg of the dollar index going up in that uh, in that fake breakout so this is exactly the point here and we have a trend line from the 2015 December low until 2016 December low yeah so as you can see every year there's an interest for buyers in uh, in gold 2015 started going up 2016 started going up yeah and then and then of course here I I, um, I was able to spot this um, this Fibonacci uh, measurement from basically from the movement of W towards the retracement X and therefore being able to spot 150 161.8 and then I returned of course because during this time during this time somewhere around here of course I, I've noticed the 61.8 re retracement yeah I mean I, I've noticed uh, I know I've noticed this this free that's that's without a doubt however right here I was um, I was really like just just holding uh, holding off like just being patient to see exactly what happens when I when I've seen this this like very uh, very aggressive sell-off I was like um, I was like how far is this thing gonna go right and kept on going and going and going and forging and forging and forging so I just stayed put for a while to honestly and then I spotted the bullish divergence again at some uh, at some key levels Fibonacci uh, Fibonacci uh, extensions and then I posted uh, again some uh, some videos and some analysis returning to my bullish uh, bullish stance and then it went it went on the upside one two three four five in an a um, now um, you might be you might be of obviously you might be saying to yourself okay well this guy says that he, he's calling this he's calling that um, I don't really believe him yeah <laughs> it's only normal don't worry I'm, I'm used to it it's okay the point is that everything that I said or everything that I'm about to say um, uh, can be backed up with the actual analysis so let's say for instance if you do have doubt don't worry the analysis can be given the analysis is there it speaks for itself so if you do have doubts that can uh, that can clear uh, any any type of uh, doubts yeah so yeah returning to the analysis right here let's say for instance we went on the upside right after that in December 2016 yeah in three moves so that's why that's why here here of course I've I've seen the ending diagonal here I posted the possible contraction it happened all good so basically 
then uh, then we went on the upside again yeah so the the point that i'm trying to uh, that i'm going to make here is ba basically i've seen this as an a so far uh, and this this to be a b and this could look like a like a c but within this we have i mean a wave count and an impulse doesn't really match yeah so that, therefore i've marked this as a triangle yeah i will actually show you I, it's a complex structure right here in the b so therefore it's a b c and in a in a c wave you 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 couldn't have um, just an a you know an a b c you, you need to have one two three four five yeah so the point is it's not a c it's either an a or a um or let's say for instance a termination for this a b and then uh, you know uh, basically wx and then y for a larger w and this could be dx but regardless how it, how this would unfold you will still be left with this and this is a, a this has a look of an impulse and i will actually zoom in for you guys so you can actually see now what i would expect of course is a reaction on this trend line yeah this is going to basically determine in my eyes what's uh, you know what's what's the fate of of gold and let's say for instance this would be an a yeah if this would be an a then of course we would expect some sort of retracement b wave yeah and then of course returning to the very possible bullish outcome breaching this trend line and basically not not just like that but breaching it and possibly forming something on it as a bullish uh, bullish probability now if if for instance the wave count can be left like this so we have a w and then an x in uh, in an expanded flat primary scale although to be honest with you i wouldn't like to label this entire structure um, as an x yeah this this expanded flat um, but since we're talking about multiples within the multiples it, uh, it there is a possibility so i'm just going to leave it like this because this rise could be indeed could indeed be the um, intermediate a and then this intermediate b yeah so then again of course now within this x i had some some issues with uh, with let's say for instance with the analysis so i've seen the fall coming yeah and then it started reversing now i've seen a contracting uh, triangle right here so abc couldn't be an impulse so i just stayed put to see what happens at this top yeah and then i said okay we might go for the for the c leg and we did we did go for the for the for the c leg yeah however since this b um you know breached the the top i mean went beyond the start of a i thought that there is a possibility for us for me to have a running contracting uh, sorry running uh, running flat scenario right here this could have gone from here however it didn't go that way yeah so the the preferred scenario was the expanded flat scenario and this is when uh, this is when i posted an analysis here the 50 percent of this entire move yeah and then of course at the 100 percent of the uh, measurements from a towards b yeah so that's when i posted a uh, a bullish outcome and there it went it went on the upside yeah um even one uh, even one a smaller word for this but anyway it doesn't really matter the point is that we did go on the upside yeah and uh right there let's say let's say for instance right there we were getting uh, i mean as with with my analysis i was getting close to this 100 percent yeah and also this trend line so then i decided to post a possible reaction on this on this trend line and it went on the downside now what we're going to do is i'm going to basically go on this piece right here zoom into this piece then zoom into this piece and of course this consolidation because this is when i had um, slight issues with, with the labeling yeah because the structure changed right here for me and i'm going to basically go on it go, go over it and explain to you when this happens what um you know what, what's to be done when a structure changes and there's like you don't know what uh, what the next possible outcome would be yeah 
so I'm gonna go so let, let's let's first first go to to this piece right here so as as I said now I've written I'm basically shrinked in here with a two hour chart from this from that X bottom right there I mean the way I've spotted this is on the lower time frames I even had a confirmation from a inverted head and shoulders yeah also bullish divergence also ending of the wave count also some Fibonacci number so this was a I would actually say this was a nice uh, nice nice setup technically speaking this was a nice setup. I had a lot of good equations uh, to it so we went on the upside one two yeah uh, within this minute scale this uh, blue minutes and then of course the third wave you know leading diagonal minimum one retracement and three four and then ending diagonal and minimum five thus ending of course with it minor sorry minute three right after that we had a complex wxy for this uh, right wave four didn't overlap where i mean i was all uh, i was all nice nice and good okay so the last fifth leg went on the upside so honestly i was expecting this fifth leg to go a little bit a little bit higher from there when it started contracting i started doing this and then of course i analyzed the structure so i said okay this couldn't possibly be a fourth wave so we're i mean i'm in some kind of uh, either b wave or an x wave or something so i said okay after that i said okay we're we're in a in a in a b wave and when it when it started going up again then don't worry my my analysis i mean according to my analysis i was still bullish all the way here don't worry now the point is that all I needed was a bearish uh, possible confirmation yeah so as when I noticed the ending diagonal in one two three four five right here and the bearish divergence at the top of the ending diagonal which is an excellent setup by the way um, then it, uh, I know I posted uh, the bearish outcome for the possible retracement and this 78.6 obviously I was I was aspiring for a 50 61.8 as a default okay but it went a bit low and I'm gonna zoom in to basically that drop so you can you can see what happened right after that so after after short term i i became bearish again yeah notice notice that this gap wasn't uh, filled yet i mean it wasn't filled there uh and you can you will actually see that it's somewhere around there yeah okay now i'm gonna i'm gonna walk you through this entire piece right here and tell you guys uh what was on my mind so basically um i was expecting a, a simple uh, type of uh, correction although although b waves and uh, are so uh, they don't really give um, simple corrections yeah so i was uh, until then i was labeling this this part as one two and then three four and then fifth wave and then i said okay we might have an a in a zigzag so basically i was expecting this type of uh, correction for this B and then the obviously the last piece for the C leg so uh, I can actually continue being uh, bullish and here I posted on this bullish divergence I posted a possible outcome and it did go it did go in favor yeah then a retracement in here didn't really know what to do with this uh, because it kind of looked like a like an ending diagonal of some sort or uh, you know, a leading diagonal in this case it was a leading diagonal for this for this a yeah now problem that i had right here with this structure is until then i was labeling it as an a and then this as a possible b and then i would um, you know i was expecting something like this um and then when i saw this i said okay we have a possible combination then i said okay this might be a w this a must be a w and this could be the x and then we're going with an a b because we have an ending diagonal here in the c so i said okay this would be an a then b and we're going in a c yeah so basically i was i was aspiring for this type of structure for me to determine the overall type of structure so i would have been ready after this top i really wanted to i mean the price action to go basically to uh, above the pivot point my pivot point right here 1304 1310 so problem is that i label this uh let, let's say for instance like this like this um i actually know i was right here 
yeah I'm sorry one two and then three four and this move right here I was expecting it to go right right I mean just just to breach the top just just to breach the top right here so I can confirm my B wave so basically I was looking at A B and then the C so I saw the C coming okay not to say that I wasn't prepared technically or something like that just that uh, this is when the structure has has changed so I decided to label it as a W X and then a B within this uh, with this this entire corrective structure very complicated rise right here typical let's say for instance bear flag or something like that but within a complex W X Y so W X Y right here with a leading diagonal in submenuet a retracement b in a free and then ending diagonal is c this but thus this basically being the uh, minuet w orange and then retracement x a b c and so on so complicated yeah and then of course the divergence uh, actually happened here the bearish divergence and this this thing started started going down yeah the moment that, that i realized of course that the outcome is truly uh, bearish is when it breached through the lower trend line of the channel and basically this conf com possible uh, confirmed the possible bearish outcome and then it went yeah then it went on a downside now point is that here we had a bullish divergence so this was practically I was paying close attention to the time frame to, to the basically wave counts etc you know the price action movements so then I said okay it's time to go uh, it's time to go bullish again so I was bullish uh, I mean my, my bullish confidence returned yeah so we're basically approaching real time now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically zoom in so we have the the possible end of B right here and this is how we how it went on the upside so yeah of course I posted right here a possible bullish outcome yeah and then went on the upside now the, the way I, I expected this to go was not as an ABC within a leading diagonal of course I was expecting a proper impulse yeah for me to be able to um, to, to to basically gain more confidence on that impulse C so yeah the market basically went uh, within uh, one two and then ABC three four and then five within a leading diagonal in green minute one uh, now again what bothered me just a little bit is that this wave two didn't go uh, and touch basically some 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 nice nice waves like 50% or 61.8 so it had a very uh, you know very shallow retracement right here right here so kind of disappointed me but anyway here I was um, I was definitely posting possible bullish outcomes yeah but what I wanted to is just to get a confirmation from a zigzag uh, scenario so I can gain much more confidence now even so it did go up just like uh, you know what I said we have an extension right here in in this uh, minuet free uh, and the extension happens in the free of uh, sub minuet scale but also in the free of the uh, micro scale so again as I said um, they typically go in uh, some sort of channeling uh, you know structure so yeah right, right after that uh, triple uh, triple three W X Y X Z in this complicated structure for the four and you you may have noticed that it touched basically the pivot point yeah not once but twice so it's really I mean this range it's, it's a clear um, point of interest and then uh, minuet, uh, sorry, minute four green reversed right here on the divergence, yeah, an A and then a B in a triangle right there, and then the, the C wave um, touching basically some important fibs, yeah, 23, 23.6, 38.2, not yet, I mean, not, not touched, that's why. That's why I'm actually, I mean, no retracement, no, no, no deep retracement there, no deep retracement here. So, what does that tell me about uh, about the next possible uh, outcome? Yeah. Notice that I am labeling it for now as an expanding ending diagonal, which is quite rare. Yeah. However, it could go like this, and this being the one, and this being the two, so we could go like this for the three, so we can have a 
ending diagonal yeah just like it had right here yeah I mean within this piece so this this being uh, let's say for instance between um, August I mean in August uh, between August and September yeah half uh, halfway 2017 yeah just like here if if let's say gold uh, would do this I would I would be confident that we could have an ending diagonal not an, uh, an expanding ending diagonal but a contracting ending diagonal which can be a obviously as as the course states a possible uh, bearish confirmation yeah so this would be a scenario where we would go like this within this trend lines yeah so we go one two three four and then the last squeeze on the upside um, for this bullish uh, bullish outcome and as you can see um, most probably we are within uh, a fifth fifth five waves sequence yeah which can either be a C or a one yeah for what's uh, what's basically to come now the point is I'm gonna return on the daily chart right here yeah point is that uh, even if, if even if that happens most probably I'm uh, I'm expecting a bearish divergence right here and this is this is when it gets interesting yeah because if as I said if it uh, if gold decides to breach this trend line then of course it's every I mean many people will become very bullish and especially if it's if it's like gonna provide some sort of possible buy setup there to possibly confirm another uh, I mean a continuation and a rise however I would expect a deeper um, deeper retracement yeah if, if this was supposed to be a first wave then of course we were uh, I'm going to expect something like 50% uh, 61.8 yeah let's see where this where this leaves us with so now what I want to what I want to actually show you is this red trend lines right here which actually worked nicely for me so we can see basically the first stage was was tested one time two times third time it went to the second stage yeah then again one time second time third time actually went to the third stage so you can see how important this uh, this trend lines are yeah not to mention that they are sitting exactly at some important Fibonacci levels now point is that how I'm labeling this is as intermediate A and then complex structure in this intermediate B it could be a W and then X and we had here an A B and this could be the breakout yeah for the C but it can also be just as it is yeah just delete this okay it could be just as it is a B and then one two three so regardless of what it is here at the trend line I mean at this contracting uh, possible triangle let's say uh, a reaction is is expected so the point is that um, technically speaking you would um, you know I would I would expect this to you know possibly retrace uh, and this is this is exactly what I'm what I'm going to explain to you right now now what I would ex what I would expect in order for me to confirm a possible wave two, right I would need a zigzag type of, uh, of structure retracing about 50 or uh, 50 or 61.8 of this entire piece right here now if uh, if for instance it's not uh, if for instance it's not a zigzag and it's a wave B in a complicated structure yeah so we have you would have an A uh, I would have an A right here and then some sort of complex structure right here yeah with some fake breakouts possibly a triangle we don't know we, I really don't know what's you know um, can't can't really see what's in the future yeah but um, if the structure is complicated either as a flat or a double triple three etc uh, complex structure if the structure would be complex then of course this would be a, a B wave yeah so a B and then of course you would I would expect this C 
so the key is what I'm trying to explain is what I'm going to do is I'm going to monitor and basically see if I can uh, possibly confirm a bearish di divergence to um, you know to to see the uh, to see the fall uh, you know to, to anticipate the possible fall now that fall I'm going to obviously um, take a look and see how it looks like how the structure looks like in the corrective pattern because most definitely this is impulsive yeah that's that's how I see it anyway so anyway this is my personal opinion of course right but this pretty much looks impulsive and the point is that it's either a one or an a yeah for now in my in my personal uh, view in my in my eyes so when we go on the upside if if or when we go on the downside yeah um, these lines are to be watched of course as a 50% retracement either it's a B or a 2 doesn't really make a difference yeah 50 61.8 this would be this would be my my point of uh, point of view so this top right here of this B yeah 1295 which pretty much as you can see you can see these levels how important they are and we are pretty much trading above them yeah so these levels are, are quite important we broke through kind of uh, you know here so I would expect a um, let's say for instance uh, a comeback and possibly you know for the for, for bulls to um, you know get some reinforcements prob probably so yeah those are my those are my, those are my plans now in order let's say for instance if should this trend lines be broken yeah then that's that's basically serious stuff because the outcome could could become like bearish so that's why you know as a you know w when you analyze these these type of structures you need to be ready for everything yeah but the point that I'm trying to make is that regardless of how the structure unfolds in real time uh, an analytician is able to see uh, that to spot the fact that the market has uh, either shifted or the, the structure has changed yeah so regardless of the outcome I would be ready you would be ready that's the point yeah now moving along uh, to this uh, to this piece right here so notice that you know from from what I said until now I am expecting a um, you know personally speaking I'm expecting a possible uh, you know uh, corrective pattern for the dollar index therefore um, as soon as as soon as this divergence would uh, would occur and of course for gold to have a proper divergence I would need something like this and then something like this so I can have a, that double confirmation yeah for the divergences so anyway um, I would very much like to see an ending diagonal right here and then I will be able to um, post uh, post an article with confidence one more thing that I wanted to show you is the GDX mining vectors yeah now point is that it went on the upside uh, with gold of course in 2016 for this bull run right here which I marked as an a B triangle and then one two three four five within this intermediate C for thus completing a intermediate scale ABC for the primary W yeah now how we're going with this with the structure and pretty much uh, in my personal view GDX is kind of preparing to uh, possibly push metals on the upside yeah so I'm labeling this as an A then a B in a running flat uh, contracting flat etc and then the C wave uh, intermediate W pink X and then A B C for the Y thus having a complex long-term structure for this W X Y yeah so and the way the way this goes is as multiples within multiples so W and then a contracting tri triangle A B C D E in this uh, in this purple X yeah intermediate purple X and then of course I marked this as a um, so the, the reason why I'm labeling this as a W X A B C and a Y is because um, I mean so far it could have been an A and then a B uh, and but the point is that I would have expected here to have a five wave sequence which we don't yeah so I don't have that I have a, a B wave yeah so this can only mean that I'm actually trading in an A right here so minor A then minor B retraced in a complex structure WX ABC this is a double zigzag 
yeah and then of course uh, right here uh, started going up I did post this uh, this this uh, possibility it was it was okay it went on the upside now what I'm what I'm basically about to say is that we do have a possible uh, divergence uh, approaching yeah so I would expect uh, let's say for instance possibly a possible retracement before getting more enforcements and then if that happens then of course I believe that metals could gain something out of uh, out of this uh, you know mining vectors looking uh, a bit bullish so now let's say let's say for instance as a, as a, on the weekly chart again as a summary uh, this trend line needs to be watched should we go there if we go uh, there again on the downside needs to be watched um, again on the daily time frame these I cannot express how important these lines this this trend lines are because those could be possible um, you know I mean I would actually see the reactions there to possibly confirm some uh, some outcomes uh, some possible outcomes, very possible outcomes on high probability let's say but then again, the closest point is here. So let's let's just see uh, for now if gold manages to squeeze one more up or not. Yeah, because if not, if breach of this of this entire trend line, notice that we are trading. I mean, I'm I'm actually having this uh, this you know this rise marked as a as a channel right there. Yeah, we're already trading below the channel, but it can come back and basically gain support on it or if it breaches this line and I actually see something like this let's say for instance as a bear flag uh, of course I would be a bit worried and I would say okay we're, we're not gonna I mean I, I, w I could not have that uh, outcome on the upside although however I'm still uh, optimistic about this and of course as all uh, um, uh, as all elioticians, I'm just waiting and seeing, uh, as, you know, observing and possibly confirming uh, the best uh, possible uh, outcome. Yeah. So that's enough. That's enough for gold. I hope you get the picture there. That's actually enough for gold. And uh, let's let's basically continue with uh, crude oil. Do some quick analysis. And then